FM 94, The Dark, it is that time again. It's time to get to know a band we play here on The Dark. And tonight I'm talking with Waylon Revis. And of course, he's with the band A Killer Confession. And Waylon, first of all, thanks so much for joining me. And uh, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you doing? You know, I'm doing pretty good. And, uh, you know, we're getting into that time of year up here in Minnesota where uh, it starts to be the transition from summer to winter. And uh, some people like that. Some people don't. Uh, It just depends on which side of the fence you're at. So how about for you? Where are you calling from tonight? I'm calling from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. So how's Cleveland? Cleveland is absolutely hot as it can get today. Oh, okay. So you got what we had uh, on Monday, which basically was uh, like, uh, I think it was like 81 degrees, but the dew point was like 75. So I felt like I was on the equator. Oh, it, it, I am on the equator. Like it was like ninety degrees today. Today, I am not even kidding. <laughs> it's it's crazy, isn't it? Here we are in yeah, October. It's like, where's my fall? You know, it's like I'm a fall baby. It's like I was born in September, and it's like I, I it usually gets cool. It's not doing that this year. Yeah, nice. Hey, I want to talk about the band A Killer's Confession, but before we get into that, let's let's get some of the background and the history of you, Waylon, because I know you've uh, been with other bands, so I guess it kind of gives us a, an idea where you've been to now to this point. So give us kind of your backstory, I guess. Well, people who really know me would know me better if I was to put a mask and you know, makeup on and, and start singing some mushroom heads. Uh, I did Mushroom Head for 10 years, and I left in 2015. And I started A Killer's Confession in 2016. And I've been doing that ever since. Let's talk about, uh, you know, The Killer's Confession now. What made you uh, decide to uh, go on to a different uh, avenue of that? To be honest, to completely be 100% honest with you, I was going to retire. When I left Mushroom Head, I was done. I didn't want to play music anymore. I didn't want to do any of that. And uh, it was very much, uh, I went and worked with children for a year. And those kids told me, and they they called me Mr. Whalen, and they were like, Mr. Whalen, um, you tell us to follow your dreams every day. We found out who you are. Why aren't you following yours? And kind of checked me in, in right where I was at. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, so it's like it got me right back to doing it. But I was getting the itch by that point too, and uh, you know. But I needed to get off. It's like you do something for so long, you kind of need a break from it every once in a while. Right, man. Right. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, it's not. It's it's sometimes you got to do that and or scratch the itch of what you have, right? Yes. And that's what you did with this band, A Killer's Confession. So how did the band all come about then, and where did you get all the other members of the band to come and play with you? Well, um, the original lineup are from Illinois. And Matt and John and Paul, they, you know, touring isn't for everybody. And we and now it's more or less, you know, I have guys come in, fill in spots and play. I, uh, we have a pretty good solid lineup right now. J.B. Cross plays bass, Morgan Bauer on drums. Uh, um, we have Brock Starr on, on uh, lead guitar and Bart Alexander on rhythm. And uh, those guys, you know, they're awesome to work with. They're a bunch of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Well, it is. It's good, man. It's like I could not be a band unless you're a nerd. You got to be digging the stuff I am. We we got to be able to go to a watch a Marvel event. Right. You know, be like I just drop everything. Like we're going to go watch Avengers, and and I want and people around me better be like, yeah, we're doing that. And I'm around all those dudes. <laughs> nice, nice. You know, you know, is it so with the Killer's Confession? Let me get. I'll, you know, you're being honest with me. Is it is it tough for new bands to start out, or did it help that you were with a band that is well known in the past? It it it, it can be two sides of the coin. It's good and it's bad at the same time. Okay. Um, being the good, um, you know, yeah, I do have a name, and I've been out there, and people know who I am. Being bad. Um, the people expect me to be that still. And I wouldn't, you know, music is growth. You can't just continue to do the same thing. Life will get stale. Life will get boring. And, uh, you know, it'll get monotonous. And with the killer's confession, you know, it's like it is the exact opposite of what uh, I was doing with, when I was with my other, with my former group. And, you know, it's a, it's a two-sided coin, but, I mean, it, it is tough. And the, and the fact that 
a lot of people are like, whoa, this is not what I expected. And right. at the same time, you know, I'm known already. I'm like, oh, that's Waylon. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, is there? Mm-hmm. Oh, not, not, a, not a darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking with Waylon from uh, the band, obviously, A Killer's Confession. Uh, your new song, which uh, you put out a, a couple weeks ago, and I know it's off of an album that came out a little bit ago, called Numb. And uh, I tell you what, I I fell in love with the song. I, I, I think it's a great song. And by the way, it was a uh, winner of our Rock in the Dark New Music Ball this past week. So there are other people out there that thought it was a great song, too. Uh, oh, really? It yeah, won. Isn't that crazy? There's actually other people that like it. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, Absolutely. It's uh, really special, actually. Yeah, give me, uh, gets the history of that song. What is it all about? So, okay, Numb, um, I wrote that with Tommy Church, uh, okay. the guitarist from Mushroom Man. When he left, it was the first song that we had wrote together since I had left. And, we, you know, we got back together, and Tommy and I have known each other since uh, we were, like, little, like kids. Like, and he is the only friend I have that ever knew my mother. Because my mother passed away when I was young. Okay. That's how far back we go. And it was the first song we wrote together, and it was just so special. And then I sent it off to L.A. to Sahaj Ticketon to have produced. Yeah. It's like, hey, here's a song I wrote uh, with Tommy Church. I want to, I want to, I want to make it better. And we sent it to him, and it just turned into this. Really, it it, it kind of got a life of its own. Um, it was it was not what I expected. It was so far. Uh, and Tommy went out. Charlie and I sat down and did it. We were like, "Let's do something that we've never done," and I think we did. Uh, it, it, it's just you know, you wouldn't expect this type of song to come out of. Absolutely. I mean, this is a, a great song, and I think a lot of people understand it. They're getting it, and uh, they're really enjoying it. And, you know, and this this album. Am I right, wrong on this? This album was actually came out a couple of years ago. No, 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 no. This album comes out next month. Okay, that's what I'm thinking of. I'm, you know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of your other song, Rebirth, that was came out earlier. Am I correct on yeah. that? Okay, that's yeah, what I'm Rebirth. thinking of. That's it. There we go. So yeah, Rebirth came out of Unbroken, the first the it, it, And that was a couple of years ago, correct? Yes, that was I back got in 2017. You. All right, so I'll scratch my note here and switch that to that. So the new album now, which is Numb, that comes out here next month then. So talk about yes. that album. What are we expecting on that album compared to what we heard on Unbroken, which was out a couple of years ago? Okay, well, half of it is a lot like Unbroken. Okay. It's a lot like for my old days of the industrial, um, more, more heavy. Right. But the other half of the album is like Numb. It's, it's a complete opposite of that. And I did that to gain, to, to like really grow musically and to, you know, broaden my horizons. But I kept it uh, heavy with the other half for those that loyal fan base that has been with me since day one. Right. You know, I, I joined, you know, since I've been doing this, I've been doing this so long. I got to keep them happy. So it's a really hard, fine line to walk. You know what I mean? It's like, you well, I want to. I want to grow, but, you know, I don't want to really make everybody mad either, but, okay, I'm going to do both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're kind of like towing the middle of the line when it comes to politics, right? Both ways, right? And that's what I'm talking about. Like, when you were asking me if it was good or if it was easy or not, that's the line. It makes it hard for me. Right. It's like, I, you know, I'm really trying to do something new, and at the same time, I got those people who are like, and they're lo- my fan base is the best fan base. They, they're so loyal. And they know more about me than I do. Uh, they, they, they are so loyal, and they, they keep up with everything. And I love keeping them happy, you know. It's like they speak to me. You know, I, I watch my social media feeds and all that, uh, the comments, and, and you know, I, hear, I hear what they say, you know. It's like right. they all the fans. And, you know, it's like, why not listen to them? They, they know what they like, and you want to want to keep them happy. Let me ask you. Uh, let me ask this. Wait, wait. Let me ask you this question. Okay, so you know, you obviously the Mushroom Head. To me, Mushroom Head, great band, all that kind of stuff. But it never really was going to be fit on rock radio per se. I mean, yes, you had some stuff, but a Killer's Confession. Does it have a? Does it have at least a little bit more? I guess uh, acceptability is what the word I'm looking for for rock radio. Or how, I guess, how do you feel about that? Yes, and that's the big thing about a Killer's Confession. Like when I did Rebirth. Um, I really wanted to dive into it, and that was the start of it. You know, it's like writing songs like that. I mean, I did the heavy stuff to right. you know, keep the old fan base happy. 
but I did these other songs to show that, you know, it's like, I can do this too. I, you know, it's like, I'd like to, to have some radio uh, stuff. And, you know, it's like, this is to be more accepted, you know, with the more masses and stuff. And that's what we're doing it for. Because, I mean, if you got the talent, why not? Yeah. I got a good team working with me, and it's like, and I think the songs rock. I was like, okay, this, this is awesome. And then the response I get is like, wow, I did not expect this. This is really cool. And it's kind of like I'm getting to that point now. I'm like, well, I've really never been here before because, like you said, with the with, with my old group, it's like we didn't really have that. Right. We were never really that band. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I guess I'm kind of curious, too, because you've been in the industry for a while. Um, you know, how big is radio compared to now what it was maybe 30 years ago? And for that matter, even is social media or other outlets becoming more important than radio? Radio is a viability. Um, I mean, it gives you credibility. It's like something about being on the, the, you know, when people are driving, whether it be a satellite or FM, you know, when you hear something on the radio, you know it's something special because not everything gets played on the radio. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You can find anything on social media, but you got to be at a certain level to actually be played on the radio. So to be played on the radio, to me, is more special than any of it. Like to be like I'm, I'm, I'm old school. I want, I want a Headbangers Ball or yeah. MTV. I want videos back on television. I just think there was something special about it because it was able when you, when you had that format, you were able to separate everything and really put the, the most awesome of awesome up there, you know. And with social media and YouTube, you can find everything. It, it, it doesn't make it as special anymore. Right. You know the other thing too. I, it, and for a, a fan, or a, I guess of uh, rock music, sometimes uh, there's, you get so diluted with everything, you don't know where to go. I think it is, to be honest with you. Um, I think that there is too much. I mean, it's like it's like you can find everything. Like I said, you find everything there, and there's so much, and there's so much good content. But it's like you get lost in that too. It's like how do you find it? And, like, in my day, it was the radio or MTV or v one or something that would, like, put that into you. You know, it's like, would turn you on to new stuff. And now, you know, it's like Facebook, you got to pay for it to be seen. So, like, you'll have a big fan base, but you got to pay to see that fan base. Like, right. the, the artist itself has to pay to be, to be, have your content seen by the people that already like your page. So, it's, it's, I liked it better the old way. The new way, you know, yeah, people get lost. It's hard to get. You get kind of lost in the shuffle. All right, we the just social media shuffle. We just we just got a minute, Waylon. You and I were just too old, right? Is that what it is? We like it the old way. No, I don't. Think, I think I honestly, I think that we lost a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be being old because it's like, um, it, it's like, like I just said, everybody can do it now. Right. So how do you get seen through that? Like you, you, like it's hard to be found. It's it, it's a it's a much tougher uh, business. You gotta have a tougher skin than you've ever had in this business. Right. You know anything? You're you're under complete scrutiny. Like you gotta watch everything you do. And Lord knows you don't want to do anything wrong. But the you know it, it's just a different time. It really is. God, could you imagine back uh, when Motley Crue and all those bands were just crazy? And all the social media posts that would have been posted on them, all the stuff they did back then? Oh, it would have been great. <laughs> because you could, I just because of what they do today. What did they do today? I mean, you can't be in a band. You can't do that anymore. No. You can't be that way. Uh, Granny, you, you, I'm going to go ahead and say this. I have lived a life kind of like that. Right. And I'll be telling you right now, it, it's like, as fun as it sounds, there, there's not. There's, it's always a dead end. It, there's no light in the tunnel living that type of life. Right. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it's like, Lord, it is fun to read what when other people do it. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? It is. It is. I love I love seeing stuff where people just do the dumbest things. And, I, you know, it's like people are people. And it's like a lot. And, and I think people forget that, too. It's like we're only human. Uh People make mistakes right. all the time. Absolutely, and, uh, and, I, and I think that's one thing that that we don't have that we because we. I'll be honest with you. Back in the day, we were a lot more forgiving of a lot of things than we are today. Yeah. Today, we are not that forgiving at all. <laughs> no, no, no. You can't do a lot either today either. <laughs> uh-uh. That's true. I, you know, it's like I'm 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 
truly blessed. I, I never really get in trouble. I've never been in trouble with the law. I've, I've, I've always had a, a good, uh, clean slate. But, you know, my wife, uh, like, works with me hand-to-hand uh, with the band and stuff. She goes on the road with me. I've right. always got my partner with me. And, you know, if she keeps any – if she thinks somebody's getting ready to start some trouble, my wife – and my wife's small. Like, I'm going to go and take my wife's a little bitty thing. And she, you would think, is a Rottweiler. Like, she will scare them out of the room. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> thinks you're getting ready to cause trouble. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, the way we, we work is, like, we'll go to the show, we'll play the show, um, and we don't run with any crew or anything. That, that, that's how it is now, you know. I have everything set up where I really don't need one. Right. And uh, as soon as we're done, we're done. I'm driving to the next show, and I'm always with my wife. So it's like I've never... We never get in trouble unless we get pulled over for for speeding because we're late. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't think that's much of a headline. <laughs> no, no, not really. Not these days anymore. We're talking to Waylon Revis, uh, of course, the band, A Killer's Confession. I, I, I know you've played in Minnesota before, but have you played A Killer's Confession in Minnesota yet? No, I have not. I have, I have yet to come to Minnesota. We have, been, we have bounced around, and I'll tell you, that is one thing that my fans, and, I, and I, 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 they are the greatest fans ever. They are totally always jumping down my throat because they're like, oh, you're skipping Minnesota again. Yeah. Minnesota again. And then they'll throw in the fact of what sports team I pull for, and that's the reason why. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just beat us this week, so okay, I'm sorry. He's a Bears fan, by the way, if you didn't know that, everybody. So why now. Are you gonna make people hate me already? <laughs> <laughs> But if we hey, but we we're both in agreement. If we beat the Packers twice, we're happy, right? Yeah, that, that's all we got to do. We, I could lose every game of the season as long as I beat the Packers twice. I'm I'm extremely happy. So we always got something in common. So we got something in common. Well, I, well everybody in the NFC Central just loves uh, you know we we just we we just love watching people beat the Packers. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I think that's every team in the NFC Central. That's all we want. Is the right. Packers to lose. <laughs> So talk about touring. Is there a chance of uh, some touring coming up soon? And uh, whereabouts could you be? Uh, we are we are doing a handful of shows for the next uh, uh, couple months. And the reason is because we're we're actually slowing down. Even though we're releasing a brand new album, we're trying to get out and do more um, bigger shows with with larger artists and our agents and everybody working with that. So we're doing a couple of spot shows here in Ohio next weekend. We're playing Heath. Ohio, and then we're playing Lansing, Michigan, and then we're doing our CD release show here in Cleveland. And then the next show I know after that is we're not doing anything until I think December 6th or 8th. I'm not quite sure on the next okay. playing Chicago, and we're doing a Toys for Tots run. We're actually going to go out there and uh, do do a charity show, and which I'm all about. I think uh, you know every child should have a, a happy holiday, and, and, and if I can do anything to help kids in need, Get uh, have a have a, a happy holidays. I don't want to say Merry Christmas because I'll get me in trouble. All right. Well, you can say that. Up. You can say it up here. We're in Minnesota. It's okay. Oh, oh well, I, every child needs to be seen by Santa Claus, and, and if you if you know what I mean, right. I, I'm I'm a I'm a firm believer in that. And uh, uh, last couple of years, I have done uh, toy spots, and uh, you know, I'll find a family in need, and I'll try to help them. I'll I'll help buy Christmas presents for them. Um, and they'll never know it's me, but I just, you know, that's just, you know, see a child not get something for Christmas, it right. breaks my heart. So I'm all about doing a show like that. So when I'm asked, I'm like, yes, y'all don't even, don't even, don't even, don't even ask me. I'm already there. So. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Hey, the new album, when, what is the drop date on the new album? October 18th, and the new album's entitled The Indifference of Good Men. Nice, nice. And, of course, that's going to be available pretty much everywhere, and especially as we talked about social media earlier, you can get it on social media and stuff too, correct? Oh, yeah, you can go get you can get it on Apple Music, Spotify, you, uh, find it on YouTube. Just, just go listen to it. That's all I ask, you know. It's like um, there, there, there are CDs for sale, but, you know, CDs come becoming a thing of the past. So I, I'm pretty sure everybody's like, go to Spotify. You know, go. Uh, if you guys are going to play it, listen to it. You got listen to the dark. Absolutely, <laughs> you can hear us there. Um, you know, but I, I, I just thought this everybody says just go do it, do it. Come see us when we're in your town. You know, page. You know, as much as I don't like social media, go to it and follow. Go follow our events because we always post where we're going to be, and you know, always try to have a good time when we're there. So, who's in charge of your social media? You or your wife? 
my wife. That's what I figured. I just, I'm a ha- I'm a happy married man. Absolutely. And there's a reason why she runs my social media. Absolutely. <laughs> you got to do that. That's I I hear you. That's same with mine too. She takes care of pretty much all that stuff. I don't deal with that. I, I, I yeah, it's, yeah, too much for oh, me. I just, well, you know, we'll be laying there, and I'll be running or something, and she'll just start giggling. And I mean, and it, it's that it's that deviant giggle. And and I know that that somebody has sent something, and I'm just like, <laughs> what is it this time? And she goes, you really don't want to know. And I'm like, is it that bad? She's like, oh yeah, this one's getting blocked for it. <laughs> ouch! Ouch! Oh, and, uh, great. You know, and we're not, it's fine, but she, like, seriously, it's like, we don't need that in our lives. You know, it's like, if you want to say hello, say hello. Do it the proper way. Right. Just say hi. You don't have to do anything else. Absolutely. And, uh, but I just, I think it's cute, you know, and I can, because I, I know as soon as it happens, because, like, we're always together. She'll just be laughing, and I'm like, who did what this time? <laughs> <laughs> but she does, she runs in, she, she's very good at it. She's very organized, and, She's way better. She, she's way better than that than I am. I, yep. you know, I'll go. She'll t- she'll tell me. She's like, here, you're going live in about an hour, and you're going to talk about this, this, and this, and this. And just she goes, go have a conversation with the fans. Yeah. And she tells her when to do it, and and I do it. And but you do she, it. And, and but the thing that is, I don't have to worry about it because I mean, when you're really into social media, that stuff can actually ruin your entire day because you won't have any time to do anything else. You don't. No, I agree. I agree. Hey, the uh, new song is called Numb. We're talking to Waylon, A Killer's Confession. Uh, thanks so much for joining me, by the way. We're going to play your latest song. And uh, good luck on uh, everything uh, coming up. And hopefully this album takes off and blows up and be huge, okay? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, we're hoping the same thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon, Waylon, okay? Thank you. Once again, that is Waylon Revis. The latest song from A Killer's Confession is Numb. You're hearing it right now. It's on the dark. It's on FM 94.